D6T. <clears throat> I already got this one torn apart and I did the troubleshooting already. Uh, the original symptom was it had a real slow tilt, but all the other implements worked fine. This is the tilt valve. This is what Caterpillar calls a shuttle valve. But just on this end of it right there, inside there's a little check ball. That's your resolver. That's uh, what tells the pump to stroke up. So when I would deadhead the rippers, deadhead them all the way up, then it would tilt fast because it had full system pressure. The resolver in the tilt circuit was telling the pump go full spool. Or I'm sorry, the ripper circuit. Anyway. Uh, when you let off, it would go right back down to just standby pressure, you know, 200 PSI trying to tilt. It's got the six-way blade. Got your tilt cylinder right there, angle cylinders, of course your lift cylinders. So you could tell this one's failed. You guys can't hear it. But that little check ball inside should be rattling. I can hear this one rattling. You guys probably can't hear it, but anyway, there's no spring or anything in there. It's just that, just just that little check ball. <clears throat> so that's where we're at. Unfortunately, it's got the four valve bank in there. You guys are gonna see it when we all get in there together. It's tight quarters. This is worth noting. We got our little schematic here of our valve. We got our torque specs here. So that shuttle valve only torques to 142 inch pounds. So that's like 11 and a half foot pounds, just under 12 foot pounds basically. Uh, but usually anything under, you know, 12, 15 and lower, a lot of times you'll get your measurement in inch pounds, 177 inch pounds. Anyway, we're gonna continue on with this. All right, I sprayed it out here with some brake parts cleaner. We got our shuttle valve installed right here. I left the socket here so you guys kind of see where it goes. Now this section of it, all this stuff is inside of here. This here goes back in the valve and that kind of blocks half your access to it. So, like I said, we're gonna clean everything as best we can. This is not the ideal environment to be doing, you know, some deep critical work like this, but we're gonna do the best we can. All right, another day. Same problem. So I'm not sure if I mentioned, I'll have to check my other clips or whatever. Originally this thing tilted painfully slow. Like, I mean, you aged waiting on this thing to tilt. Here's a quick shot of that resolver network, if you will. So when you're not activating any functions at all, all these are gonna be right in the middle, right? This would be pressure from the pump, and this would be your circuits. These little check balls right in the middle, so there's equal pressure on all three sides. This is just showing the ripper lift control, so you activate the ripper. This then becomes higher pressure right here because the ripper is now uh, using that pressure to start working. It's going to push this ball out of the way since this is a higher pressure. And that's going to in turn move all the rest of these resolvers out of the way because this is the higher pressure circuit. And this goes to the pump and tells the pump to stroke up, start making more pressure, more flow. And then when you return that function to the hold position, all these pressures are going to equalize and these check balls will sit right in the middle again. But that's just a quick overview of how the resolver works. How quick shot of your valve here. This is where your hoses go in. That's going to be for whatever function. This is actually your resolver right here. And here's a blown up picture of it. That's your shuttle valve with the resolver. And it just tells you each valve has its own resolver. It's basically a check valve. It compares pressures. The lower of the two pressures is blocked. The higher the pressure or higher signal goes to the next component in the resolver network. Each control valve has a resolver. It compares the highest primary signal to the highest primary signal in the next valve. And they're all arranged in series, so they don't combine pressures. It's just the single highest pressure is what gets sent to the pump to make it stroke up. <clears throat> so once it's done, you can check it. If you have a one valve section that doesn't work correctly, then you're going to stall out another circuit or deadhead another circuit that's closer to the pump. And if this malfunctioning valve works correctly, then the resolver is the issue because the the function that you have stalled out is now sending 
full pressure to all the valves because it's the closest one in the valve stack to the pump. But anyway, I guess a little education for you guys right there. One more thing guys, like I said this is going to be a ripper circuit, blade angle, blade tilt. When we activated our blade tilt, the resolver did not move at all, so the entire tilt circuit was running on standby pump pressure. It's only about 200, 250 PSI, uh, which normally it should be, generally it's going to be whatever the implement calls for, uh, but relief pressure is going to be around 3,000. So for instance, if you're operating the ripper, it may, it may start moving at 300 PSI, uh, and it's going to stroke up a little more due to flow and <coughs> pressure demands. But once you start putting load on it, like say you're trying to put push the rippers down into the ground so you can start ripping, then your your pressure is just going to keep building until you get them till you let off the the implement really, or until you hit relief pressure. But that's what our problem was: is this was not shifting. It never told the pump to spool up. But when we activated the rippers, since it's closest to the pump, that one would shift, and then it provides full pressure to all the rest of the valves. So that's how that's how we troubleshot that. Well, here it is, guys. <clears throat> End of the day, end up taking all the valves out. Uh, we need to clean the blade lift valve and the tilt valve. They said the tilt valve is brand new, but honestly, at least on the outside, it looks to be the one that's in the worst condition. You guys will check it out when I start separating them and tearing into it. Um, but yeah, end of the day, I'm gonna start closing stuff up. I'm not too worried about the valves being open like this, but I do wonder if we're going to get some rain, so we're going to cover them. This part, I don't want getting water in, but I'm not worried about dust and stuff blowing in through here. Working on this D6 again, this is the tilt valve. <clears throat> so right in here is where the resolver was at. It wasn't stroking the pump up. I didn't get into this section of the valve, but I probably should have. Look at our backup O-ring. So that is, that is probably what was making us not tilt very fast to the right. The shuttle valve is giving us pressure now, but that O-ring peeled out of there. Here it is, guys. This is exactly how it came out. Our backup O-ring blown out. This is how it's supposed to go. Just like that. This was installed backwards. And I didn't catch it. Like I said, I just put it together the way I took it apart. Uh, but I dug into a little more. This is supposed to be in here, like so. So we're gonna reseal it. Let's get it back together correctly. Quick update, guys. We corrected that valve, resealed it, or that sleeve, I should call it. We corrected that and resealed it. We're putting our solenoids back on. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'll, I'll just slide these control spools in, put all my stuff on it. Um, or if I'm working on that side right now, I can move all these out of the way. So I got room to get on this side better without all of them sticking through. Anyway, we're going to put all this back together. And then hopefully we're going to add oil and verify the repair. Let's verify the repair. See if it tilts fast. I don't know if I got a shot before, but it tilted super slow before. 